Howdy y'all, I'm TJ with Bear Gaming. Ever wonder if your favorite 7 days to die melee weapon is the absolute best? Well I have sifted through the data and determined the best melee weapons in the game. If you like maximum damage per swing, or the best total damage over the usable life, or even the most efficient use of stamina to take out the undead, well I have discovered the best. But if you choose to run with your favorite regardless of stats like I do, I have recommendations for mods for each to address the weakness in each melee weapon. I will also cover all the special attributes of each group of melee weapons. I will break each category into tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3 depending on what crafting level you're at. These weapons were all tested without using any mods and were analyzed at their level 6 versions with no skills or books. Depending on level and mod selection, these results may vary. Let's start with the melee weapon with the most damage dealt. No shocker here, the melee weapon with the highest damage output is the Stone Sledge at tier 1 with 27 hit points, the Iron Sledge at tier 2 with 47.8, and the Steel Sledge at tier 3 with 81.9 points of damage. These weapons have the highest damage output per use, but at the cost of massive amounts of stamina used. If you're looking for the weapon with the most damage that can be dealt before requiring a repair, then the Stone Sledge holds its spot. But the tier 2 winner is the hunting knife, and the tier 3 is the steel sledge. While maximum damage may be for some, others require a faster rate of damage to handle large crowds. Well, surprise, surprise, even with the slower rate of use, the stone sledge is the king at tier 1, with a damage per second of 22.5. But the hunting knife wins again for tier 2 with 35.8 hit points per second, and the Steel Knuckles at tier 3 with a rate of 47.2 hit points per second of zombie smash and fun. This is accurate given unlimited stamina, which is not possible until several perks are unlocked. Considering player level 1 to 300, the weapon that can deliver the most damage before the player can't swing is the Pipe Baton for tier 1 at 121 hit points for level 1, the 364 hit points at player th level 300. Hunting Knife for Tier 2, and the Steel Knuckles for Tier 3 with a massive 832 hit points before the level 300 player runs out of stamina. Another item to consider when choosing a melee weapon is any special features the club, blade, etc. offer. Let's start with the blades and their bleed damage effect and bonus while sneaking. Blades are able to inflict one bleed wound on a regular attack and two for any power attack. Bleed damage continues to lower a target's health as time passes. This speeds up the ability of a blade to take down an enemy. With skills, this amount can be increased to even kill faster. Blades also offer a 400% increase in sneak damage. This massive boost allows for the player to dispatch nearly any zombie using stealth, if you can master the skill. Spears do not offer any continued damage or boost while sneaking, but they do reduce a target's armor. Starting at 31% for stone spears, up to 50% for steel spears. Very handy for those higher level armored zombies. The sledges have a negative attribute. They are not able to sneak damage, but they do offer a higher chance of knockdowns, so not a bad trade-off. Clubs seem to be a general use weapon with no significant special ability except for the unique mods that can be attached. They are a middle ground between other melee weapons. The knuckles offer a truly unique special ability. After a head punch, the zombies are no longer able to infect the player. Great for the early game, before you have an abundance of honey or antibiotics, and the steel knuckles even have the ability to harvest animals just as effectively as any knife. Batons are odd in that the pipe baton acts as a club, while the stun baton has maybe the best special ability. Stun batons have a chance to electrocute a zombie, which causes both damage and freezes them in place. Very handy for all stages of gameplay, especially considering the stun baton was a close second to the hunting knife in almost every damage category. Axes may not be considered by the developers as the best tool for dispatching zombies, but I will say it's far from the worst. With similar stats to the clubs, but with the ability to gather more resources, the axes are a fantastic multi-use mid-range weapon. But given the ability of the stun lock and damage zombies while doing it, the winner here is the stun baton. we covered damage, stamina use, and special attributes. But what about mods? Well, regardless of type of mod, each one increases the damage output for the weapon. The trick to mods is to select one that minimizes weaknesses or adds an effect. Here are the best mods for each weapon category, in my opinion. For blades, it's the Rad Remover mod will disable the regeneration ability of radiated zombies for 90 seconds. The Diamond 
blade tip mod, any hand tool or bladed weapon degrades 40% slower with this modification. The tempered blade mod, this blade modification increases block damage by 10% and lowers degradation by 15. Fortifying grip mod, when health is below 50%, gain one hit point every five seconds. For machetes only, the burning shaft mod. Melee item can double as a light source and set enemies on fire. For spears, the weighted head mod, a modification for all melee weapons and tools, adds a chance to stun and slow victims. The diamond blade tip mod, any hand tool or bladed weapon degrades 40% slower with this modification. The burning shaft mod, melee item can double as a light source and set enemies on fire. Rad remover mod, will disable the regeneration of ability of radiated zombies for 90 seconds. For sledgehammers, rad remover mod, the burning shaft mod, the ergonomic grip mod, decreases melee stamina usage by 10% and increases weapon handling of bows by 10%. The weighted head mod. For clubs, the structural brace mod, this modification for melee weapons and tools lowers degradation by 25%. Rad remover mod, the burning shaft mod, metal spike mod, each successive hit lowers enemy's armor rating by 20%. For knuckles, the diamond blade tip mod, rad remover mod, fortifying grip mod, the tempered blade mod, for batons, Rad Remover Mod, the Weighted Head Mod, the Structural Brace Mod, the Fortifying Grip Mod for the Pipe Baton, the Stun Repulsor Mod for Stun Batons only, will send zombies flying on a charged hit. And finally, Axes. Rad Remover Mod, the Burning Shaft Mod, the Serrated Blade Mod, 10% chance to cause a bleeding wound on a regular attack, even more opportunity to cause damage with the Axe, the Structural Brace Mod, durability is another factor to consider when selecting the best melee weapon. How long will they last? While the blades tend to have higher than average durability across all the weapons and tiers, while the sledges being on average the lowest. The absolute best durability for tier 1 is the stone axe at 300 uses, tier 2 is the hunting knife at 1,154 uses, and the best of tier 3 is the steel knuckles at 1,346 uses before breaking. Considering the cost to repair nearly all weapons is a repair kit except for the tier 1s, overall durability may be a low consideration as repair kits can be easily found or made. The winner for durability is a tie between blades and knuckles. Last is how the weapons function in combat. How far is the reach? Are there glancing blows? How well do they dismember or knock down opponents? These can add to the effectiveness of the item and increase its usefulness for the player depending on how you like to play. Blades are short reach weapons with a focus on singular targets, with the exception of the machetes, which are capable of glancing blows and high dismemberment chance. Spears have the same single target focus, but with a greater reach at the cost of not having the ability to hit targets in a sweep. Skill books do allow you to penetrate multiple targets in a line, though. Sledges have a high knockdown chance and offer glancing blows to multiple targets. Clubs have the same effect, but at a lower rate than sledges. Knuckles offer glancing blows and an increase in knockdown chances. Batons also have glancing blows and a higher chance of knockdowns from my testing. Axes have both the ability to dismember and affect multiple targets from glancing blows, so for combat functionality, there's not a clear superior combat advantage from these attributes that can be separated from a survivor's particular playstyle. This category is dependent mainly on how you like to play. So what's the best melee weapon? Well, if you want pure damage, then the sledgehammers are the best. If you want to produce the most damage before running out of stamina, and the best durability, then the hunting knife and knuckles are the route you want to take. A fully modded stun baton is more than able to handle nearly any blood moon with its special ability and mod combination. With the right skill combinations and mods, for late game, any melee weapon will perform more than adequately. On a special note, the axe has also proved to be average for zombie slaying, contrary to the fun pimp's description, with stats on average similar to other melee weapons. Their only real setback is their limited combat mod use and lack of skill bonuses. Well, that's all for melee weapons. I hope you found this information useful. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with any other survivor. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and if you have, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Until next time, laters.